Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, my goal is at the end of this video is for you to find out what are the top virtual assistant services that are in demand right now that you can offer whether you're a student, you are a teen, or you're someone with no experience or even a little bit experience when it comes to working from home. Now make sure to watch until the end of this video so you guys can know the one thing that you can do right now to figure out if the service that you're about to offer to a client is something that they actually need. Now if this is your guys' first time on my channel, my name is Leanne Lakaba. I am the virtual ate. So make sure to hit subscribe right there so you can get tips every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home. Now, if you guys have no idea what a virtual assistant is, it's basically someone who offers certain kinds of services when it comes to working online. It is usually the perfect first step for people who are just starting out because they're not really sure what their skill is, they're not really sure what they're doing, but they're kind of mostly playing to their skills, their own strengths of what they're able to do already. And again, it's basically the first step that someone can take when it comes to finding a job online. Now, for this list, I'm going on a range so i'm going to talk about the skill from where you can start from it and then where it would be an expert level so i'm not just going through a list i'm going through back and forth of what it would look like if you're a beginner if you were just starting out and then what it would look like once you're an actual expert on this skill that i'm going to be talking about the first service that you can definitely provide is definitely one that a lot of people talk about which is just admin management. Now, admin management is a very broad term, but basically you're someone who's helping the business owner or the entrepreneur or whoever you're working for manage their business. You're kind of the in behind the scenes of making sure that everything runs smoothly. Now, the beginner level of this is basically someone who's mostly doing calendar management, email management, something that usually takes a lot of time for the entrepreneur, for the business owner and freeing up that time. So you're doing it and you're giving them what are the important emails that they can go through, what are the important like events that they have to make sure that they're there for it also includes on the beginner level again appointment setting like making sure that whoever their contact is actually shows up for a meeting or they show up for a meeting some of it would be handling their docs their virtual documents uh, making sure if there's anything that needs to be signed anything that needs to be looked over so when you're starting out as a virtual assistant you're kind of starting to form into their kind of second brain you kind of think of it that way you're kind of an extension of the person that you're working with so it really depend on on what it is that they're currently focusing on in their business and then you're kind of just following that you're kind of making sure that they're supported that they're you know taking care of the other side of doing admin work is actually now project management so project management more is you're actually handling projects that they're doing and then making sure that it gets done what that includes could be employee management like hiring people making sure that they get the job done right making sure that they have the tools so it's coming from managing a business owner you're managing their time you're managing their tasks you're making sure that the tasks get done, you're shifting over when it comes to project management, you're shifting over to actually helping their people, helping the business owners, people of whatever project that they're currently working on to get it to the finish line. So that's the range of admin management is, again, from just kind of cloning the business owner, making sure that he or she has what they need to actually helping out and actually help them finish a project, getting, again, could be managing an employee, could be hiring, could be actually managing the tools that they need or whatever it is to get the project to the finished level. Usually admin tasks are the first things that a business owner hires for because of course they're gonna be drowning in focusing on the skill that they like doing rather than doing the admin work. So a lot of things come into it. Admin management could be just customer assistance, like replying to emails from their customers and their clients, managing those clients, making sure that they're well taken care of, not just giving them a hi and hello, but helping the business owner develop that relationship with their client or their customer. Now, if you can offer this as a service, admin management or project management, management. That's definitely something that all business owners are usually really looking for, even when you don't have a niche, even when you don't have a focused type of client that you want. So admin management, if you're going to be starting out, if you have kind of not really a lot of skills, but you know how to look through things, you know how to organize things, you know how to make things just look better. And this is a service that you can outright provide for, again, entrepreneurs and business owners. The next service that you can provide is writing. Now there's different levels of this. And for me, I started out writing for blogs, for magazines, when I was 15 years old so this is something that I know the full range capacity of so if you're someone who's starting out the first range of writing is usually more creative writing or article writing this is where a client will give you a piece of content or an idea of a content and you just write it out you could write a short story you could write top five list of best accountants in the area so you're just writing more content for their own blog for their website for whatever purpose that they have so that's kind of like the minimum version of writing when it comes to working online is mostly just short pieces 
is usually like 500 words to 2,000 words. And it's usually something that a lot of business owners are looking for because nowadays, if you don't have content, no one really knows who you are. So when it comes to writing in general, if you're starting out, that's the perfect place to kind of play around in is just article writing and creative writing because you get to see what your style is. You get to see what you're comfortable with. On the other side of it, of the other side of writing is now copywriting. Now, copywriting, if you have never heard of it before, it's basically a skill where you help sell a product or a service through a sales page, for example, through a Facebook ad listing, through like newspapers. That is what copywriting is. Copywriting is you're selling a service or a product for the client. You're making sure that people understand what this product or service is. So they're more tempted to buy it. They want this product or their service. So that's the other side of writing. It's a whole range, but that different sides of it is again, as simple as creative writing or writing articles. And on the other side is actually selling, helping a client sell something with that that's a product and a service. In the middle of it, it could be ebook writing, for example. It could be creating captions for their social media. It could be helping them plot out a PowerPoint presentation or scripting out a YouTube video. It could be a wide range, but writing is a really good place to start if you're someone who's already really good at pouring things out, writing things on a piece of paper or typing it out. If this is something that you're already comfortable with, this is definitely something that you can start out as a service when it comes to working online. The next service that you can definitely provide is graphic design. Now, again, it's another wide range. And if you have no idea what a graphic design is, you're basically creating graphics or very pretty images that the client can now use for their own content, for social media, for their website, for whatever else that they would need it to be. Now, to starting at one end, to the beginning end of graphic design is basically anything that has to do with social media graphics, like quotes or promos for their services or their products. That's one side of it. It's the type of graphics that you can create with tools like Canva and maybe even in a little bit of Photoshop, not a lot, but it's basically basic graphics where you can easily create something really pretty for your client. On the other side of graphic design, a more expert level is actually helping design web pages, helping design apps, for example. It's a lot of the wide range. This is where now you're using more advanced editing software for your client, whatever it is that they need, whether that's maybe a PowerPoint presentation that they would be using to sell their products, whether that's a big PDF of all of their services that they can give to their future clients, whether that's a freebie or a a landing page that they can now use to sell their products or their services. So that's the wide range when it comes to graphic design. Now, if you're someone who's already a little bit graphically inclined, you already like putting out photos on Instagram, you like already creating photos yourself inside of Canva if you're using that tool. And then this is definitely a service that is in demand because again, it goes hand in hand with content creation because you're showing them very beautifully what they're offering, what the service is and what they're talking about. The next service that you can offer as a virtual assistant is social media management. Now, again, I'm going to go through the range. So social media management is basically you're helping them take care of their social media. Again, a lot of the times when they're trying to hire for someone, they're just trying to get their time back. So they're having someone else do the tasks that usually are time consuming, like social media management, so they can focus on the things that actually make them money in their business. Now, on one side, on the beginner side, you're doing just the usual social media management. So it's replying to comments, it's making sure things get posted. You don't necessarily have to do the graphics for it, but sometimes it is kind of imply that you do the graphics for it. It's maybe writing out their captions or just editing those captions from them and then making it look pretty, making it make more sense, making sure that when you're doing a reach out, like if someone messages their Facebook page or their Instagram or their LinkedIn, you're making sure they reply to that they know that they've been seen. So the conversation with their potential clients and customer does continue. On the other side of social media management is actually being an expert on a single social media platform. So you could be an expert on Facebook, you could be an expert on Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, you could be an expert on one of them. And then you're the person that whenever they run into a problem, whenever they're stuck on their own content, you're the person that they go to you know, like, hey, I really want you to just focus on this platform. I'm making a lot of money on this platform. So I want you to focus on this and just this. So a lot of the times, a lot of business owners will do that. So that's the other side of being a social media manager is you're being an expert in one platform and you know what you're doing automatically. So business owners know that they can trust you. The next service that you can offer as a virtual assistant is research and organization. So this is a very broad one again. I and mean, there's not really a beginner or expert level for this because it could be, again, it depends on your client. So research and organization could be researching for potential events that they can speak at or podcasts that can be interviewed at. It could be researching where they would stay if they were going to fly out to a different country or fly out to a different city. It's organizing their own itinerary, whether they're traveling or if they're creating an event. 
It's researching maybe potential clients or where their potential clients might be looking at. It's handling a lot of data, for example, if that's something you want to be focusing on. For example, if I gave you my YouTube analytics right now, can you figure out what I'm going to do next? Or if I'm handling you my Facebook ads data or something like that, can you figure out what to do next? So it really depends on what you want to focus on when it comes to research and organization. But you're basically just taking in a lot of data, a lot of research from yourself and organizing them so it makes sense and the business owner can take action based on that. So again, it could be something as small as just researching their travel, researching what events they can speak at, to as big as actually helping them organize maybe a course that they're creating, maybe an ebook that they're writing at. It's really a range of where you want to focus and what naturally comes to you as something that's easy when it comes to researching a bunch of stuff online. Another service that you can offer as a virtual assistant is book keeping. Now, if you're someone who's naturally really good at numbers, you're someone who likes looking at numbers, unlike me, then bookkeeping is something that you can offer. So bookkeeping in a lot of times has, again, has a range. So it could be as simple as making sure that they input any receipts that they have into a Google Sheet, is making sure that everything is tracked on their budget, or as big as kind of their outsourced accountant in a way, even though you might not be someone who's an expert at what country they're in, what the accounting rules are going to be on there, but you're kind of just helping them manage their finances, making sure that if they hire this person, they're not going to be going bankrupt next month. So you're helping them figure out their finances so they can keep running their business. And again, that's a range. It could be, again, simple as making sure that you input all of their expenses, making sure that you're tracking their receipts so they can give it to an actual accountant or you're someone who's kind of their, again, outsourced accountant who's helping them figure out their taxes, who's helping them figure out their finances so they can plan better in their business. The next kind of service is digital marketing. Now, if you have no idea what digital marketing is, it's basically making a plan or a strategy for someone to make sure that their brand, their product or their service is known online. So again, this is another one that's wider range. It's it could be as simple again as social media actually that's the simplest form or to as complicated as where it's like a multimedia it's everywhere you know it's it's actually worth like two thousand five thousand dollars when it comes to selling their product or their service so again it's a wider range but basically if you're a digital marketer you're making sure that they know who they're selling you're making sure that service or the product that they're selling actually makes sense to their target market and of course the target market can actually afford the services so this could also involve reaching out to potential brands that they can collaborate with, with potential people, business owners that they can collaborate with their product with just to keep promoting and again letting other people know what they're selling and what their services are so they can keep of course running their business. So digital marketing is again a huge wide array. It could be as simple as you generating leads for them making sure that they're getting their clients in or something where it's actually this huge strategy that you have planned out where it's really complicated and really big but the purpose is that you are trying to sell a higher tier service or a more expensive service service for the client that you're working with. The next service is something that I actually already mentioned, which is lead generation. So if you have no idea what lead generation is, you are generating potential clients or customers, that's called a lead, to have interest in a product or a service that your client has. So for example, it could be as simple as, again, beginner level for that, is researching for potential clients, researching their name, their email, grabbing their customer information, whatever that looks like, and then handing that information to your client and then have them do whatever it is, whether that's reaching out to them their email or doing a call for that lead. The next level of that is then the expert level is actually you're helping them close calls. You're helping them close a client. That means that you're actually helping them close the sale, actually make money. That's the other side of it from lead generation. It's again, as simple as researching and just finding the data for them, or you're the actual person who closes the deal. You're the person who's calling them up or doing an email where you're making sure that they actually say yes, that they actually buy the product or get the service that your client is offering. So that's a range when it comes to lead generation. Again, you're generating leads, you're generating people who are possibly going to be interested in the service or the product that your client is offering. The next service that you can offer is video editing. Obviously, my YouTube videos have been edited by my amazing assistant, so this is something that you can offer as well. So video editing, the range for it now is it's simple as cutting a few raw videos, like making sure that there's no ums, that there's no wrong pauses, or there's no weird, awkward pauses that the person who's creating the video does so that's the easy part. The expert level is adding effects, green screen. It's adding things that doesn't make sense in the background, but that's the expert level when it comes to 
video editing. Now, you could be offering this as a service to YouTubers who are starting out, who don't really have a lot of effects on their videos, to actual, of course, the biggest expert of that is now the movies or TV shows where they need that really big effect. So it really depends on you of where your skill level is at, but that's a range when it comes to video editing. As a virtual assistant, this is something that you can offer for someone who is mostly focused their marketing, their own product and service in video. And a lot of times there's going to be a lot of them because video is a growing market. A lot of people are going to video more and more. So if video editing is something that you're already interested in, something that you've practiced yourself, then it's definitely a service that you can offer as a virtual assistant. Now, another service that you can provide as a virtual assistant is basically funnel management. Now, if you have no idea what funnel management is, is basically you're taking a customer through a journey from someone who's just aware of what the product is and what the service is to someone who's actually going to buy it. So it's a, it's a whole range of making sure that people see an ad, for example, or see a Facebook post or watch a YouTube video to actually buying whatever service or product that is. So example for me, my own funnel is for those who watch my YouTube videos or my Instagram posts or my Facebook posts, you guys are now more aware of who I am, of what I do. And then on the other side, the thing that I'm selling is now either the Work Anywhere Challenge where I take people to learn how to work from home in 10 days. And of course, my one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's my end of my funnel. That's my what I'm selling. So funnel management is where you help a client take the people who are like leads or people who are who already saw their content, who already saw what they're putting out to attract customers and making sure that they get to the point where they're actually going to buy or they're going to purchase for that client. So it's a little bit like lead generation, but you are more focused now on the whole thing. You're not just focused on getting their information and all of that. You're actually helping them focus on attracting them, again, getting them to the point where they know about the brand, to the point where they kind of sign up for something, whatever that freebie is, getting to know the client a little bit more and to the point where they actually buy something from the client. The range of funnel management could be, again, you're just helping them attract clients. So that could be anything from social media or that could be something where you're helping them create more content, whether that's a blog post or a video. And then on the other side of it is, again, you are managing the clients and customers to make sure that they actually buy. You follow up with them, you help them, again, make that sale for the client that you're working with. So it's again, it's a huge range when it comes to funnel management, but more and more people are going into it because they're creating products and services, but they have no idea how to actually sell it. So if this is something that you wanna work up to becoming an expert in, it's definitely an in-demand service. And if you're someone who's a little bit more techie, who has a little bit more experience working with websites, for example, or apps, then a service that you can provide as a virtual assistant is just tech assistance. So this is basically helping them manage their websites, helping them manage their apps if they have apps, if this is something that you already know what to do. So again, the range for this could be managing their WordPress sites, making sure that's up to date, making sure that there's no bugs, making sure that when people go into it, they can follow the funnel. On the other side of it, of tech is mostly like making something from scratch, making a website from scratch or an app from scratch. So again, it depends on where you're at on it. So tech assistance is making sure that the tools that your client has actually work and helping them if there's any hitch for a little bit of making sure that they have all the right things before actually contacting customer service for that tool that they're using. So tech assistance is if you're someone who's already knowledgeable about a certain platform and you know the back end of it, and this is something that you can definitely offer as a service to your clients. Now, how do you actually find out who you want to serve as a client for this. For all of the services that I just mentioned, how do you actually find out who would be interested in it? Now, I've already actually covered this on a video where I talked about how to find your skills and your niche that you guys can check out. But basically, if you want to figure out who you can actually serve with all of the services, you do it by niche hacking. Now, niche hacking is where you find out what niche or what industry a potential client could be in and actually writing out step by step what are the steps that they have to go through in order to create their product and the service and where can you step in? Where do you fit on all of this? So for example, when I'm creating this YouTube video, I had to plan out what kind of content. I had to research what content people are interested in right now. I had to get the script written and then I have to actually, of course, shoot it and then edit it, add effects. I had to make sure that the title and the keywords and the description of this video was right. So you have to look at someone's business or someone's product or service and figure out you're going to niche hacking because you're, you're trying to look at where they're at and see if they need your service. So for example, for me, something that has been very helpful with my own amazing assistant is just video editing. Cutting down the hours, like four to six hours that I would spend a week just video editing has helped me a lot, of course, because then I could focus on the other stuff like marketing my videos, finding other people to interview for my every Thursday videos and creating more 
connection so people like you find my channel more. So niche hacking is basically just a process of just looking at someone's business, you're looking at their service or their product, you can pick just one of them. They have so many products and seeing in the service that you've probably picked where you actually can fit and help them out with that. Now, if you guys enjoy this video, of course, make sure to hit the thumbs up button because that does help grow my channel and of course, help me know that this is the type of content that you guys like. Now, if you haven't yet, please hit subscribe button right there so you get my tips every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home. And of course, comment below if you already figured out what service you're going to be offering as a virtual assistant. Now, you can check out these other two videos right here to get more shortcuts when it comes to working from home. Now, I hope you guys have an awesome day and remember that small steps matters. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!